and uh, let's see. So um, over the weekend, I did a bunch of grading in addition to watching the Super Bowl, which um, I emailed you all about. You guys get my email. Yeah, so hopefully that was pretty clear. You could go on Moodle to check your grade. Um, you should be able to see it right on the forum post. I'm not exactly sure what you guys see. I have a slightly different view from the instructor perspective. Um, you can go to that hamburger menu up in the left corner and go down and see your grades there too. So anyways, hopefully you can find your grade. If you can't, let me know. I gave very general feedback. In general, people all did fine. Um, there were kind of, you know, a few general categories where if you basically did exactly what I asked you to do and then had some insights in the process, you got full points. If you didn't, but generally follow the directions, you probably got like an A minus, like 90 out of 100. And if you somehow missed major instructions, you still probably got to be. So I, I was very generous in the grading. Um, if you have specific questions about how to write a better essay or how to do academic writing or what did I do wrong in my paper, um, I'm always happy to talk about it. And I find that, um, you know, that's actually the best way to learn how to write is to talk individually. Because as much as I could like type up a paragraph for you and tell you exactly what I think you could do better or something like that, in reality, uh, the best thing to do is come to me before you write an essay. We talk about the big ideas. We talk about the details to achieve those ideas. Like, you know, what is what do you want to say? What is your main idea? How do you, what kind of argument do you want to make? How are you going to support that argument? You have this, this, and this idea. What, what about that other idea over here, over here, right? And so this is how you really learn how to write. It's a really a way of thinking as much as it is like syntax and grammar and all that sort of stuff. So um, anyways, if you want to learn how to write, I would be happy to teach you, but it's really got to kind of be one I want. Yes, Simone. I did have a video conference with Moodle and 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 Yeah, if you weren't able to do it over the weekend, I will still accept it. Um, I may penalize it depending on the situation just because we have to have deadlines of some sort. But yeah, if you get it to me like this week, then you will still get, you know, full points basically. So yeah, um, as throughout the semester, again, it's a weird semester and I'm very, very flexible in terms of attendance and everything. Um, send me stuff, you know, if you're not sure, just do it and I will almost certainly accept it. And, you know, like, a month from now, I'll probably say, hey, did anybody not turn in that first forum post? Because it's better to get like five points than zero points. So I'll be accepting stuff throughout the semester. But that being said, turn them in online or sorry, turn them in for the deadline if you want absolutely 100% to know you're getting full points. Um, yeah, what did you guys think about this assignment? So, you know, it was pick a love song and interpret it as a scripture. Was this difficult? Was this interesting? Was this boring? Yeah. So why was that surprising? I don't know. It's like, it's like, it's almost like when you read the book, you know what you're saying. Uh-huh. Um, it's like, oh, it's so obvious because they're just like singing about someone they love and then you're like, oh, this is just singing about that's what most people did. Yeah. I mean, there are other ways to approach it, but that's probably the easiest one. And, you know, it's sort of a weird thing to do, right? Maybe you wouldn't initially think to do it. So it feels a little uncomfortable, a little strange. But yeah, I, I agree. Once you start doing it, it's like, oh, these songs are actually incredibly vague, right? They're just talking about this vague person, this you who is out there. So many songs are doing that. And it's very easy to take the person away and put in some sort of deity, God, whatever. And uh, all of a sudden it becomes something very different, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, of course the inspiration for this was the Song of Songs. You probably remember that from the lecture. Um, I could have made you all read that, but we just talked about it very briefly in class. And it is this old Bible passage, right? It's a section of the Bible. Um, that was exactly this exercise, right? It was this old love song and people started to interpret it as a scripture, right? So, you know, I didn't make this up, right? This is something that actually happened. It's actually in the Bible. It's something people still do today. And so we are just kind of expanding this idea to other songs. Um, does anybody want to share? You know, I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if anybody had a particularly interesting 
song um, or any realizations? Does anybody want to tell us about the song that they picked and, and what, what they wrote about? Is anybody proud of their work? Maybe you notice um, in those forums, you can read everybody else's posts. And I encourage you to do that, right? If you were like trying to write it, you know, right before the deadline, you didn't know exactly what to do. Some of the posts were probably already there and you could have read your uh, classmates posts. Now, I don't want you to like totally rip them off and pick the same song because of course, then you're not really doing the work. But if you aren't sure what to do, you know, a good way to learn how to uh, approach these assignments is to just see what other people are doing. So anyone want to share? Is everybody embarrassed about their work? Well, don't worry, you know, it's, it is there for all of us to see. So, uh, you know, we can all go back and read each other's work if you're curious. Um, no, 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 any love song, any love song, yeah. So yeah, um, Simone missed class last time, but if you wanna you know, go over the assignment anymore, we can just talk after class. Does that sound good? Um, okay, so, if there nobody wants to share, um, I guess, yeah, the, the other piece is just this idea of what is a scripture. And I, of course, I hope that this exercise helped you get a sense of how scripture works, right? Scripture as a verb instead of a noun, scripture as a human activity. That's most of what people talked about. And that, again, was the goal of the exercise. And you can expand this beyond the love song too, right? And other parts of your life, people can kind of scripturalize all sorts of stuff, right? If you're walking down the street and almost get hit by a car, you can think, oh, maybe this is God telling me something that I gotta be careful and make sure I don't get hit by cars, I don't know. Um, so you can scripturalize things even more, um, I don't know, poetic than a love song, right? There are many, many ways to take this. So um, the main thing I wanted to get into today is Tevye the Dairyman. We're actually a little bit behind schedule. We we're supposed to do this last week and it's fine to do it today instead. Um, we'll go through it a little more quickly than I initially planned, and then we'll get into some Hinduism at the end of class, and then we can do Hinduism next time later in the week. So it'll all it'll all come together. Um, so this class is kind of a an intro to religious studies, right? And so what we we're doing mostly last week is getting a sense of how to study religion, how to think about religion from an academic perspective, right? They're kind of different ways of thinking about religion. One is from the perspective of the practitioner. The other would be from uh, what we might call an outside perspective, right? The perspective of the academic. And um, the reading for today was actually talking about this very idea, right? Double vision. So again, we'll get to that either today or next class. Um, and so this scriptural exercise was giving us some tools to think about religion as scholars, right? As academic scholars. And so another part of this class is trying to get a taste for all the different traditions of the world. I mean, we've already talked a little bit about Islam. We've talked a bit about Christianity. Today, we'll talk a bit about Judaism, not to say that this is like a totally Jewish story. It does take place in a Jewish community. And so, um, and beyond this week, what I, what I really know the best is Asia. Um, and so we'll talk a lot about Asian traditions too, and then come back to America by the end of the class. So we're kind of going to bounce all over the place. And again, the goal is to give us tools to think about all the different religious traditions, whatever we encounter. So just a little background. Um, if you didn't print it out, this is the um, Tevye the Dairy Man. I think I, I forget exactly what I call it on Moodle, but it, it's a PDF on Moodle. So you can open it up, we're gonna talk about it today. So feel free to get it open on your devices. All of you in TV land, you can open up the PDF of Tevye the Dairyman. I guess I can uh, show you what it's called here. Alchheim, yeah. So the author is Alchheim Tevye, uh, 35 to 52. So that's what we're gonna talk about first. Um, a little background on it. It's a book of short stories. It's, it's pretty old, it's like a hundred years old. So the author is Shalom Alheim. Um, he grew up in a shtetl in Eastern Europe. And so basically just a Jewish community in Eastern Europe. And then he moved to New York and he wrote short stories uh, all along the way, right? And if you think about Russian history, um, this was a time of major transformation in Russian history. 
right? Uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, there's a revolution, they became communists, but when he lived in this area of Eastern Europe, um, it was still, the czar was in control, right? So this is a time where they're moving from what we might call more traditional society into modern society. And that's what really these stories are all about, is what does it mean to be in a traditional Jewish society? And then what does it mean to kind of move into modernity? So I picked um, just one story from this larger collection that then formed the basis of Fiddler on the Roof. Has anybody seen that before? Fiddler on the Roof? Yeah. A while ago? Okay, I'm glad you at least heard of it. Um, maybe I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Fiddler on the Roof? Fiddler on the Roof, anyone? No, I never heard of it. It is what we're gonna talk about right now. Yeah, so again, short story is the PDF I gave you, but there's a movie version of it and we're gonna watch little bits of the movie and then we're gonna talk about it. Um, so yeah, if you don't know it, it's, it's very famous. It was uh, on Broadway in the 60s. It's still on Broadway now. And if it weren't pandemic time, you know, we could even try to go check it out. Um, well, I guess I can't say it's on now. It would be on now if it were not for the pandemic. And then it, um, went into film in the 70s. So yeah, really a classic story, important piece of American culture, right? Because again, a lot of these stories were actually written and published in New York, even though they're about Eastern Europe. Um, and the particular story we are talking about has a lot of characters, but we'll focus on four of them. So I, I know one, one challenge of short stories, I don't know if you guys would agree with this. I'm gonna open this window. Um, is I kind of prefer, I kind of prefer novels because like I get to know the characters and then um, the story sort of unfolds. With the short story, I feel like I'm spending the whole time trying to figure out who everybody is. And then by the time I figure it out, the story's over. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. But the good news is there's a movie that'll help us sort of figure it out. This is Tevya. He's the father of the family. Um, he's, we could say, the main character. He's a dairy man, right? So he has cows and milk, and he sells milk throughout the village uh, in Tsarist Russia, right? So again, that's referring to kind of the old Russian society. His daughter is named Tsetel. I think they say Tsetel in the, in the movie. She's a young woman, daughter of Tevya. There's an old widower. What does it mean to be a widower? Do you guys know what a widower is? Yes, and so it's a man instead of a woman, right? A widow is a woman. He's an old man who uh, his wife died and he's a rich butcher. He's not that old, he's a little bit old though. He's probably about Tevye's age um, and he's a rich butcher. And then model is the fourth one. So these are the four characters that we need to know in order to understand this story. And he's a young man, he's a poor tailor, right? So tailors of course make clothing. So why don't we just watch this? And um, what I want you to think about is, the main question is what kinds of love are depicted in Tevye the Dairyman, right? So there are a lot of related questions to this. Obviously we can just talk about like what exactly is happening in the scene, what is happening in the story. But just like last week, we made that list of different kinds of love, remember that? Um, I wanted to tie it into this, but we ran out of time. Um, what kinds of love are depicted in this story and how does it affect the story, okay? So uh, let's watch the scene. Now I'm going to, before we get into this, I'm going to pause uh, pause the record. Chunk of class today, but that's okay. All right, so we're recording again. Who wants to share what they learned? What did you guys talk about? Um, so Michael talked about that there was like three types of love. There was the familiar love, the obsession love, and soulmate love. The familiar love was the love between the father and the daughter. Um, so the father didn't want the daughter to starve to death or not be poor as him. So like he wanted to marry her into a rich guy so she can be protected. Mm. Um, the obsession love was the butcher. He just wanted the idea to have a wife instead of just have like 
be married to her per se or be married to her because he's in love with her he just wanted a wife mm. and the soulmate love was the the love between i don't know how to pronounce their names for a motel and um the daughter of tibet that yeah. those were soulmate love because they love one another but because tibet has these traditions it's like he can't ask for the hand in marriage excellent very very nice uh summary that, that's that's wonderful um so familiar love doesn't want daughter to starve. I think that's definitely on point. Obsession love. I wonder. So why choose the word obsession? What? So you you explained yourself very well. But what is what is his um, obsession about? His obsession is just having a wife. Is that what you say? I would say yeah, because like in the end, I feel like if if he rejected this proposal, then he would have gone to another person to look yeah. for another wife. Like it didn't necessarily have to be, it wasn't necessarily about her, but for the fact that like he needed a wife. What about the word lonely? Isn't he lonely? Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah. But he like- He and said that, right? He's like, I'm lonely. Cause right, even in the video clip we saw, um, Tevye was like, you know, why do you want her? And he thought they were still talking about the cow. And he's like, I'm lonely. I need a companion, right? Is that a bad reason to look for a partner? What do you guys think? Is that not a legitimate sort of love? Is somebody who's trying to get over their loneliness making him desperate? So it's like a desperate kind of love. That's true. You guys ever felt that way? You don't want to marry someone that's desperate? Yeah, it's not very attractive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, these are desperate times, though, guys. I'm just saying there's a lot of loneliness out there in the world. Um, okay, and then soulmate love. Yeah, that, that's definitely a, a nice description of title and motto. They sort of declare their love for each other, right? So good. I think we, we covered a lot of the bases here. Um, what does Tevya think? He kind of changes his mind actually a few times throughout, uh, throughout the story. He, of course, he's the father. As um, Who was that? Was that Jessica pointed out? Uh, he doesn't want his daughter to starve. That's right. And so what what makes him change his mind? Why does he finally um, agree to let his daughter marry Mottel instead of Laser Wolf? Why does he change his mind? Is that a hand, Jessica? Go ahead. Um, I'm assuming because he, he the Mottel promises and that he will never let his daughter starve. Like he, he, he makes like a vow, like he wouldn't let his daughter start. That yeah. he would do everything in his power to make sure she's and has food. Now, I'm, I'm just looking at the, the chapter and hopefully you guys did this too, right? I don't expect you to like memorize every detail, but you know, as you look for answers to these questions, you can go through the chapter. Um, so, Tevya says, a child like you ought to be spanked. What exactly do you propose to live on after the wedding? The money you'll get from pawning your stomachs since you won't be needing them anyway? Do you plan to feed your wife matching vests? Actually, I might've even had this over here. Um, yeah, what are you gonna eat, right? Um, so he doesn't even totally believe model that he's gonna be able to feed the family, right? And yet he lets them get married anyway, right? Why does he... Why does he let them get married, even knowing that Model is a poor tailor who might not be able to take care of his daughter and the rest of, you know, their potential family? What changes his mind? We talked about that in our group, so we can share if nobody else got it. But what do you guys think? Could it be because he knew that they'd be happy together? Yeah. Yeah, it seems sort of obvious, right? It's like a, a very simple idea, um, but it, he knows they'll be happy together. And more specifically, you know, this is what we talk about in our group, is it's what Saito wanted, right? Saito, again, her name's hard to pronounce. Um, it, we talked about how the word Tsar, you know, is like the emperor of Russia. It's that same kind of ta, T-S sound, Saito. Um, it's what she wanted, right? She was crying when she heard that her father had forced her to marry somebody else. And she was very sad. And she was very sad because she wanted to marry Mottel. Very simply put, just what she wanted, right? Um, so yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, 
so when we think about this story, I, I think um, Jessica got us started with some really wonderful categories. I think she really, her, she and her group really nailed uh, the different types of love here. Now there's one, I guess before we move on, are there any other good conversations you guys had? Anything else, any other groups wanna share anything? We all good? Okay, um, there's one piece of unfinished business is um, Tevye has to tell his wife, right? Because the wife also wants what Tevye initially wanted, which is to make sure his daughter has food to eat, right? Um, how does he break it to her? How does he explain to her that their daughter is gonna marry a poor tailor? That's the last piece of the story, and it's also very clever. How does Tevya convince his wife, Volda, that's her name, that their daughter, daughter should marry a poor tailor? Well, let's watch and find out, shall we? Um, here, I'm gonna, the fact of the matter is we'll be able to find a lot of comparisons and similarities too. That, that's, that's the general approach we'll take. So um, if you didn't do the reading from the Hindus, right? It was pretty short, it was only like 16 pages. That's the picture of uh, the bunny rabbit, the, rab the rabbit duck head, whatever that is, and the, the rabbit in the moon. Um, if you didn't get to that yet, we will talk about it next time. Like I said, we're a little bit behind schedule, but you know, we'll catch up. I'll just keep kind of squeezing stuff until we get right back on track. So next time we'll dive into Hinduism and then, um, where do we go from there? I think we'll, we'll read some Hindu scriptures, um, for next class. So keep up with the reading, keep the schedule on Moodle and, um, we'll, we'll catch up with the, the content from the course as we keep going. So any, any questions before we call it a day? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. So actually I'll just, I already have it on my uh, hard drive. So Doniger, so that's the Rig Veda, yeah? yeah? And so there are some parts of this that are like crossed out. So you don't have to read the crossed out part, but yeah, just read everything else. That's basically how I, I most of them won't have these big X's, um, but because there's so much jumping around, I, I just kept this big X space. So this is an old, this is an ancient Indian scripture. It'll be hard to read. You know, some things we read are more modern. Like this is more like an academic book. It's, it should be much clearer, even though it's a little challenging in its own way. This is a translation. This will be, this will be hard. So give it some time, sit with it. You're not gonna get all the details, but you know, do your best, just like we always do. So that's it for today. Um, I'll see you guys Thursday. And if you're feeling well, come to class. We miss you. All right.